the card in as well. So that should be, we're on the card now for everybody. So the, yeah, then no, we get no access problem, access from our YouTube channel later on. Great. I don't know why you've got no sound. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, okay, no problem. Right, ready to go? Yeah. Brill, okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so my name's Chris, I'm for the school year from Wink from uh, Wigan Lee College. It's nice to see you, uh, if all but virtually, or you can see me at least. Um, and hopefully what I'm going to do for the next um, kind of 10 minutes or so is just tell you plenty more about the apprenticeship pathway. Um, a, a number of you understood to be looking at a few different areas. Uh, I've mentioned about motor vehicle, about trades and things. So that's great. I'll come on to that in a bit more detail as, we, as we're going through. Um, but if you've not necessarily considered apprenticeships, just, um, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll sort of pick up some uh, useful bits of information um, as we're going through. OK, uh, maybe you'll sort of, um, you know, who knows, you might be, become a little bit more interested as we're going along. Uh, OK, so if we can move on to the next slide. Well, OK, so hopefully what I'm going to cover in the, uh, the next next few minutes is all these sort of uh, frequently asked questions about apprenticeships. So. Um, kind of how do I apply for one, what subjects are available, um, what about qualifications, uh, what about the money side of things, obviously that's a big draw, uh, and also what is a CV, because they are very, very crucial um, to kind of um, the process with apprenticeships. Uh, if we move on to the next one, please. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, so, uh, apprenticeship. So, you know, I'm sure that most of you will have, um, if not all of you, got a full understanding about what apprenticeship actually, actually is. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Yeah. Um, so, uh, apprenticeship there, a real job with training that leads to a great career. So, a few key words in the slide there. So obviously, job uh, being the key one. So you're employed, uh, you'd be working, uh, training. So a tra what training means is that you've got some sort of uh, kind of qualification element to everything. And then career, uh, now just something that you like end up doing for a number of years. Uh, so there's lots of different things to, to consider. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, how do they work? So uh, you're employed, learning and earning from day one. So it's not as if you kind of um, going to school, going to college, you've got your lanyard, etc. You're an actual employee of a company. You could be working for a small business. It could be for a big business. And you are there to learn, ultimately. Um, so earning, learning, uh, you are there to pick up the trades, the skills that you need to satisfy what we call the standards, apprenticeship standards. Um, and you'll have so many standards to meet um, to pass uh, to get your qualification. Um, if you just keep go to the last slide, sorry. Oh, we're going too fast. Oh, that's it. So generally, you, you're in four days at your job and one day uh, at the college. Sometimes that can differ depending on the job that you have. So some in some apprenticeships, five days a week, you are there with that particular company. Other jobs come with uh, one day a week, day release training, okay? Um, with every apprenticeship, there is that day release training built in. It just depends, some do it in the workplace, some do it at college, okay? And you gain a nationally recognized qualification, okay? So that was one of the questions on the first slide there. What kind of qualification do I get? It's a nationally recognized qualification and there is a kind of a ladder of progression, which I will go again come on to uh, further in this presentation. So there's a lot to like about apprenticeships. You know, there's the kind of job prospects, uh, earning money, but also you're getting qualified at the same time. Okay, yep, we move on. So earning is a real kind of um, attractive part of apprenticeships. Obviously, if you go to college full time, uh, then obviously you just go to college. But if you're going to a, your job as an apprentice, then you can expect to earn a salary um, or like an hourly wage. Uh, and the minimum uh, wage that you can expect is £3.90 per hour. OK, now some apprenticeships will tell you how many hours and then they'll put you on kind of minimum apprenticeship wage. Apprenticeships are better than that. 
and they come with a, a kind of yearly salary. So it does differ um, from job to job. You know, some, some apprentices are better paid than others, but the minimum you will earn there, £3.90 uh, an hour. And like I said about this whole thing about you being an employee of a company, you know, you get holidays throughout the year. not just a case of, oh, it's half term, I'm off. Oh, it's summer holidays, I'm off. If you start an apprenticeship, uh, say, next year, um, you'll have, you know, whatever entitlement um, companies have. So, say, if they're five weeks a year, uh, like someone like me, then, then then those are your holidays, okay? So, you've got to be prepared for things like that. Uh, next slide, please. So, there's different types of apprenticeships. So, these are common, uh, like, across the board. If you're looking at apprenticeships and you don't necessarily see uh, what you kind of want on there doesn't mean it does not exist okay so uh, it might be something quite niche it might be something in a different area to the ones that are on the screen these are pure ones that are at college at the minute these are the ones that we that we offer okay so they kind of sectioned off there the business and professional roles and the construction and engineering roles so you've got you know a wide range of uh, sectors so you know the hospitality sector hair and beauty um, catering, things like that, uh, and uh, business and administration. So those are fall under business and professional there. And then construction and engineering, things like your trades, okay, really, really popular um, areas these for apprenticeships. So things like carpentry, joinery, uh, engineering, okay. Um, these, these are really, really popular, okay. So And the electrical should be on there um, as well. Uh, not quite sure that's on there. But, um, yeah. So you can just see these are the types of areas. If you can't see that, um, the, the area you're looking at in there, chances are that you might possibly need to go to college to do a full-time college or somewhere else may offer you that apprenticeship opportunity. Okay. And um, Next slide, please. Now, the, a kind of a bit of a myth, really, about apprenticeships. Um, some students I've encountered in the past uh, have been kind of of the thought that, oh, it's okay, but like my uncle runs this company, uh, he'll take me on, uh, it doesn't matter what grades I get. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that for us as a college. So for us to take on apprentices, uh, sorry, apprentices, what we need to see from you are your, um, your grades that meet the entry requirement. So the level two apprenticeships have a minimum, and keyword minimum there, of um, grades nine to three, uh, across five GCSEs, okay? And at level three, we're looking for grade four higher. So I'm sure it's been sort of reiterated to you about maths and English grade fours and how important that is, and it is. Um, but uh, please do bear in mind that if, uh, employers will look to this um, as well. Uh, question about earnings. Does it go up as your work uh, goes, as you go through your apprenticeship? Yes, so if you've started on a level two, uh, then you progress on to a level three, yeah, you can expect your, your earnings to increase. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, good question. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, please do bear in mind that you've got uh, your uh, employer to satisfy with your grades, and you've also got the college, okay? So, as a college, we'll scrutinize your grades, but your employer will as well, okay? Uh, if we move it on, please. So this is the progression ladder, and this kind of ties in quite nicely to the question that we've just taken there. So if, for example, you hit the minimum entry requirements for the level two, then uh, you would start there at your level two apprenticeship. And this is the chain that you could then go up. Okay, so level two moves on to level three. Uh, some apprenticeships at college do start at level three. So if you, know, if you can be hitting those uh, fours and above, then potentially you could see higher earnings and you can start higher up the chain. Um, nobody would start at level four uh, straight out of school. You would either be starting at that level two or level three. And uh, level four uh, basically is the first year of a degree. And that's why it's called a higher apprenticeship because that, what, what that recognizes is, is that you've moved on to kind of university level study uh, in that apprenticeship. So you do a HNC, which is a certificate, and then you've got your HND, which would be a diploma. Uh, and then once you've done that, then you'd be moving on to degree apprenticeship. So the time scale for, for each one of these, a level two, you could maybe be doing for 12 to 18 months. A level three would be in maybe 12 to 24 months. 
Uh, so one for two years. And then moving up through your degree, if you're starting at level four, looking to progress to degree level, then that generally could take you up to three years to complete. If you think about it, yeah, it might be sounding like a long time in your mind at the moment, but you could be if you then work your way all the way through, you'll have had a job, you'll have been paid the whole time, and you will not incur any sort of debt. Okay, As you're moving through these channels, then you know, you'll be paid to do your apprenticeship. Yes, you'll be working. Yes, you'll be kind of doing assignments on the side, but you know, you, you're earning and your career prospects are looking great uh, all the same as you're, as you're going through this, okay? Now, some areas, um, I'll, I'll sort of reference the motor vehicle kind of aspect here. Um, you wouldn't necessarily go on to level four or degree in motor vehicle, okay? If you're looking at motor vehicle apprenticeships, then likely that you're going at level two, you'll do that for a year, you'll learn all your technical skills, before progressing on to level three, past your level three, and at that point, then you are kind of fully qualified, okay? It is advisable for those looking at motor vehicle to, to apply for apprenticeships and see where that goes because it's very, you know, technical work-based trade skills that you'd be learning. Um, and if you're doing that in the college workshop, great. But if you're doing that as an apprentice out in industry, then uh, that'll serve you quite nicely for job links, for job experience, um, so I, I would certainly, if you're looking at motor vehicle and you're ready to, to go for an apprenticeship, certainly I, I would advise you, no harm in, in applying for one. Um, so uh, I hope that helps those sort of motor vehicle um, kind of candidates. Uh, if you're looking at more engineering, this is, tends to be where you can look towards those degree, degree level apprenticeships. We, we as a college, we offer all of these levels for engineering, okay? So if you're looking at mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, things like that, then uh, you could potentially look to, to, to get your degree apprenticeship through Wigan Lee College and whoever employs you. Uh, if we can move it on, please. Now, CV writing. Uh, so this is a really essential part of the process uh, for you now if you are looking at apprenticeships. What we do as a college is we ask for you to submit your CV. Um, it is really important that we have that for a couple of reasons. Um, one, we can work to uh, sort of kind of spruce up your CV and make it look as good as it possibly can before it goes on to employers. Um, and the other kind of reason is that we have a vacancy matching service at Wigan and Lee College. And if we've got your CV and it's looking great, as soon as um, our vacancy comes up in your particular area, so whether that be a trade, hair, beauty, um, motor vehicle, then we've got your CV and we can send that CV onto that business uh, on your behalf uh, so that you can be, you know, applying for jobs on that front as well. So we'll help you apply for jobs, but also uh, you need to do that as well. It's a two-pronged approach. The more kind of, um, you know, avenues for you, the better, okay? And the CV, it basically demonstrates everything that's great about you. So I appreciate that a 15, 16 year old might not have loads and loads of work experience, but there's things that you can definitely put on there. Predicted grades, work, any work experience, any voluntary experience. You might have part-time jobs, even if you do a paper round or something like that. It shows you're responsible, shows you can time manage really, really important skills. Okay, you put on there a little personal statement, Tell that person, tell that employer what you're all about uh, and tell them, you know, all the things that you're looking to do in the future. OK, so there are there are loads of things you can put on there. Achievements, hobbies, interests. Don't downplay anything. OK, if you've got, you know, if, if, if you um, play sports or you, you're in a dance club or you do baking or anything like that, you know, that can sort of see you might have baked for a bake sale for charity. Brilliant. Get it on your CV. Um, because, you know, it's really good stuff that employers want to see, okay? Really important that you've got that one done. And the important, and the good thing is you can do that now. You know, you can be doing your preparation now with that. Okay. Oh. We've got a maybe a question? Yeah, I think... Oh, yeah. Maybe put a question in the chat if it's a question. Um. Sorry, Chris. Um, that was my 
and I tried. I've got the on the screen in my room. Um, I think right. that was great. If anyone's got any questions, you know, what's the next step and what they should be doing? Right, okay. I think it's on the next slide, uh, quite possibly. Um, but, yeah, you, if you've not applied already, then make sure you get your applications in. Uh, I'd always recommend creating a, an account on the government website as well uh, to see all of the apprenticeship opportunities that are out there. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's the sort of process for now. As well as a college, when we interview you, uh, hopefully not too long into the new year, then we can uh, talk you through more uh, at that stage um, regarding, you know, um, what you're hoping to go on to, talking about your CVs. Uh, question here, uh, how long does Wigan Lee take to respond to application? Right, good question. So, because we've not uh, finalised the interview process in light of COVID, um, we have acknowledged applications to say, yep, we've got them. Um, but what we, uh, the students should have an email back to say that. Um, and we'll be in touch to organise your interviews as soon as we can. As soon as we know exactly what we can do safely, then we'll be in touch about your interviews. And we are looking at doing those in school as well. So um, probably everybody from who's applied to Wigan and Lee College will do their interview in school. Um, so we're just working out how we're going to do that. So don't panic if you've not heard back from them about your interview, because I know that some other colleges have got, got in touch. Okay, so brilliant. That's great. I'm going to pop this on our school YouTube channel as well. So anyone can go back and have a look over it if there's anything that they didn't hear. Um, and thank you. Thanks very much, Chris, for your time. No problem at all. Thank Cheers. you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you.